Today I'd like to talk about praying with community. Three different ways of praying. And in our series on prayer, we've been exploring some of the different aspects of prayer. And one of the, one of the fundamental ways that we pray is we pray with a community. Uh, we have, of course, our own personal private prayer, which is very important. <laughs> important to all of us. But then we have the idea of coming together with others and praying with them. Today I'd like to explore that idea of praying with community by taking us through a passage from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. And in this section of the Acts, the new community is kind of just coming together. Uh, Jesus has ascended into heaven. The apostles have begun to spread the faith. Uh, they're talking about Jesus. They're talking about the power of his resurrection. They're talking about his message of loving God and loving others. They're talking about his Jewish roots. And they're talking about all that Jesus wanted to share with them and to invite them into a deeper sense of community. So in this particular passage, it's really about the life of the early apostles. So let's take a look at this and see what it has to say to us about prayer. The community of believers was of one heart and mind. And no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. But they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, or those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. This passage tells us a lot about prayer and about community and the importance of praying as a community. It starts out by talking about a group that was one heart and also one mind. It's beautiful when you get such a group. And so many of us have been in groups where it's a struggle just to get to one mind to agree on a common set of facts and principles. And then also the difficulty of going from that to be of one heart, where there is a feeling for one another, a care for one another, a real sense of trying to reach out to one another. One of heart, one of mind. And of course the apostles achieved this through their prayer. They took what was their own, each one looking at what they had. And what they did is they put all of those possessions in common. So no matter what they had, they decided, well, it's better that we live a communal life. So I'll sell my own possessions and I'll share that with everyone in the community. And so they were moved with great power. We can ask ourselves the question, how do people become moved with such a power? We often talk about the power of our prayer. Prayer is so powerful in forming us together. And many of us would reflect on that and say, well, what is our real power? You know, we don't have a lot of temporal power, physical power, strength, economic power. But we do have the power of our prayer, the power to come together and to thank God for what we've been given. And so what they did with their power is they bore witness. They sold their possession, possessions, held everything in common, and they bore witness. And that witness became a very powerful example to many people. That witness transformed lives. 
that witness also touch the hearts and the minds, just as the minds and hearts of the earliest apostles became one, so that witness people looked and said, well, there's something different about these followers of Jesus. There's something special about them. And that was the power of their witness. And so there was no needy person. And we're amazed at this because in our world, it seems that there are always people that are in need, people that are asking for our help, people that are homeless, people that don't have enough food, enough clothes. And we say to ourselves, look at this community. There was no one in this community who had any needs. And they took all of those things that they had been given and they shared them. And they shared it to each person, but it was according to their need. So if they needed something, it was there for them. It was available. In our Lenten journey, uh, that great season of Lent, those 40 days that prepare for Easter, we have a model of this in that one of the three pillars of Lent is almsgiving. And almsgiving is caring for everyone in the community. If someone needs something, we try to provide it, not in a sense of enabling laziness, but in a sense of reaching out to help them, reaching out to see what their real need is, and reaching out each in our own way to try to offer genuine help, genuine assistance, so that their lives will be transformed, so that they will have no needs. Because we realize that that person in need is Jesus. So we treat them with dignity, with reverence, and we help them to live a better life. So let us turn now in prayer to that sense of praying with a community, praying in community, and praying in tune with community. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of our community. We thank you for the people that you send into our lives. We thank you for the community of family, for the community of our towns, our neighborhoods. We thank you for the community of our churches, the community in our country. And we thank you for the international community. Help us, like the earliest apostles, to be generous, generous with the gifts that we have been given. And help us to be moved with concern for everyone, so that we can say, as the apostles said, that there was no needy person. And we ask this prayer, Lord, with your help, through your grace, and with your courage. We ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Enjoy your prayer. Enjoy your community. God bless.